Have you ever considered the toll the opioid crisis takes on our first responders, our silent soldiers in this invisible battle? In the last few decades, our society has been grappling with an invisible enemy, an epidemic that's been steadily creeping into our homes, our towns, and our cities. This enemy is the opioid crisis, a complex and multifaceted problem that poses a significant threat to public health, safety, and economic welfare. But for those on the front lines, the first responders, this crisis is so much more than just a public health issue. It's an everyday battle, an invisible battlefield that they must navigate with courage and resilience. First responders are the very first on the scene in an emergency, whether it's a fire, a car accident, or a medical emergency. But in recent years, they've seen an alarming increase in calls related to opioid overdoses. Every day, they're called upon to save lives, often putting their own safety and mental health at risk. Imagine being the first to arrive at the scene, not knowing what you might find. It could be a teenager, a mother, a grandparent, or a friend, all victims of this insidious crisis. And it's not just the emotional toll, there's also a very real physical risk. Fentanyl, a potent opioid, is so dangerous that even accidental exposure can lead to serious health consequences. But despite the risks and the emotional strain, our first responders continue to do their job, day in and day out. They are the unsung heroes of our communities, the silent soldiers in this invisible battle, but they are not invincible. The opioid crisis has placed an enormous burden on their shoulders, one that they should not have to bear alone. First responders are the front line in this battle, often overlooked and underappreciated. They're the ones running towards danger when everyone else is running away. They're the ones fighting this crisis head on, often with limited resources and little recognition for their efforts. It's high time we shed light on their experiences, their struggles, and their stories. First responders are the front line in this battle, often overlooked and underappreciated. Let's hear their stories. It's time to hear from those in the thick of the crisis, our first responders. These brave men and women are on the front lines of the opioid epidemic, facing the physical dangers and emotional toll that this crisis brings with it every single day. Their experiences are as diverse as they are, but each carries a common thread, the stark reality of the opioid crisis. Take firefighter John, for instance. He's been in service for over two decades, but the last few years have been unlike anything he's experienced before. He's responded to more overdose calls than he can count, each one a visceral reminder of the human cost of this crisis. The physical dangers are real and omnipresent. John has been assaulted by individuals under the influence, been exposed to hazardous substances, and has had to perform life-saving measures in dangerous environments. Then there's paramedic Lisa. She's been on the job for just five years, but she's seen the opioid crisis escalate rapidly. The emotional toll is heavy. She's held the hands of people as they've overdosed, been the first on the scene when a mother discovers her child unresponsive, and been the bearer of heartbreaking news to families. The weight of these experiences is immense. Lisa carries them with her, a silent burden that underscores the urgency of this crisis. And it's not just the physical danger and emotional toll. The strain on resources is immense. Police officer David tells us that his department is stretched thin. They're responding to an increasing number of opioid-related incidents, leaving them with less time and manpower to attend to other community needs. The opioid crisis isn't just an issue of public health, it's a drain on our public safety resources as well. These stories are not unique to John, Lisa, or David. They're echoed by first responders across the country, each carrying their own set of experiences, their own burdens. Each one of them is a testament to the severity of the opioid crisis. As we listen to these stories, it's important to remember that these first responders are more than just witnesses to the crisis. They're an integral part of the response. They're the ones administering naloxone, performing CPR, and getting people to the hospital. They're the ones comforting families and connecting individuals with resources. They're the ones on the front lines fighting this battle every day. The experiences of our first responders offer a unique perspective on the opioid crisis. They see the human cost, the strain on resources, and the physical and emotional dangers firsthand. Their experiences underscore the urgency of this issue and the need for comprehensive solutions. Their stories are a stark reminder of the realities of the opioid crisis. Beyond the immediate danger of the crisis, lurk hidden threats to our first responders. 
Imagine being on the front line of a battlefield, but instead of bullets and bombs, the enemy is invisible and can strike at any moment. This is the reality that our first responders face every day in the opioid crisis. They are constantly at risk of accidental exposure to these potent substances, which can lead to severe health complications and even death. An accidental brush with fentanyl, a synthetic opioid that's up to a hundred times more potent than morphine, can trigger an overdose. It's so potent that a few grains, the size of a few grains of salt, can prove lethal. And it's not just fentanyl, there are countless other opioids out there, each with their own dangers. The risk of exposure isn't limited to the scene of an overdose. It can happen during the course of routine duties, during a traffic stop, a home search, or while providing medical aid. These situations are unpredictable and the potential for exposure is always present. This constant threat necessitates comprehensive training and protective equipment. First responders need to know how to recognize the signs of an opioid overdose and how to respond effectively. They need to be equipped with personal protective equipment, including gloves and masks, to minimize the risk of exposure. And they need access to naloxone, an opioid reversal drug, to counteract the effects of an overdose, not only for victims but potentially for themselves as well. But training and equipment are not enough. We need policies in place that prioritize the safety of our first responders. We need a commitment from our leaders to provide the resources necessary for this protection. We need a society that understands and acknowledges the dangers that our first responders face every day in their fight against the opioid crisis. The risks are real and they're severe. Our first responders need protection too. The opioid crisis doesn't just pose physical dangers. The emotional toll on our first responders is immense. Imagine for a moment being confronted daily with the harsh reality of addiction, seeing lives hanging in the balance, homes shattered, futures uncertain, all because of opioid misuse. This is the reality for our first responders, and it's a reality that takes a profound emotional toll. Confronting such crises every day can lead to a state of emotional exhaustion, often referred to as burnout. It's like a candle that's been burning for too long, slowly losing its flame. Burnout isn't just about being tired, it's a state of chronic physical and emotional fatigue, a sense of cynicism and detachment, a feeling of ineffectiveness and lack of accomplishment. It's the feeling of being drained, of having nothing more to give. Then there's the constant undercurrent of stress. It's like a shadow that lingers, a constant companion that's hard to shake off. Stress can manifest in many ways, from sleep disturbances and changes in appetite to feelings of irritability and a constant sense of dread. It's a silent battle that our first responders fight alongside their fight against the opioid crisis. And let's not forget about trauma. Our first responders are often the first to arrive at the scene of an overdose, the first to witness the devastation that opioids can cause. They see things that most of us can't even imagine, and these images can linger, leading to trauma and its associated symptoms such as flashbacks, nightmares, and severe anxiety. In the face of such emotional challenges, it's crucial that our first responders have access to mental health support. They need resources to help them cope with burnout, stress, and trauma. They need spaces where they can express their feelings without judgment, where they can seek help without stigma. Our first responders carry a heavy burden. We need to ensure they have the support they need. The opioid crisis is not just a health crisis, it's a resource crisis too. The ripple effects of the opioid epidemic have stretched far beyond those directly affected, reaching into the lives of our first responders and straining our societal resources. An increased demand for emergency services is a major factor. With the rise in opioid-related incidents, first responders are called to action more frequently than ever before. This constant response to emergencies, many of which are opioid-related, has placed a significant burden on our emergency services. Not only is there an increased demand for these services, but the nature of the emergencies has also changed. Responding to opioid overdoses requires specialized knowledge and skills. This means additional training for our first responders, a cost that is not just financial but also time and energy. First responders must be equipped with the knowledge to handle these situations, and this training adds another layer to the strain on resources. And let's not forget the physical resources needed to safely respond to these calls. Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, 
is essential in these situations to protect first responders from potential exposure to harmful substances. But PPE is not a one-time cost. It needs to be replaced regularly to ensure its effectiveness, adding yet another strain on resources. Moreover, the opioid crisis has led to a significant increase in hospital admissions, putting a strain on healthcare resources. Hospitals are grappling with the increased demand for beds, medical supplies, and healthcare professionals' time. This increased demand for healthcare services is another manifestation of how the opioid crisis is a resource crisis. In sum, the opioid crisis has caused a domino effect, straining resources at every level. From emergency services to healthcare facilities, it's a multifaceted issue that requires a multifaceted solution. We can't ignore the strain this crisis is placing on our resources. We need a comprehensive approach to tackle it head on. Our system is under pressure. We need to find solutions to support our first responders. So where do we go from here? How do we support our first responders in the face of the opioid crisis? It's a question that demands urgent answers and the path forward while challenging is not insurmountable. First and foremost, we need to consider increased funding. Our first responders are on the front line of this crisis and they need the resources to combat it effectively. This isn't just about more money for equipment and medicines. It's about investing in the people who are saving lives every day. This means better salaries, better benefits, and better job security. It's a simple equation. The more we invest in our first responders, the more capable they become in dealing with this crisis. But funding is just the start. We also need to improve training. The opioid crisis is a complex issue, and our first responders need to be equipped with the knowledge to handle it. This means ongoing education about the latest developments in opioid addiction and treatment, and training in how to manage the emotional and physical challenges that come with it. The third piece of the puzzle is mental health support. The opioid crisis doesn't just take a toll on the physical health of our first responders, it can also have a profound impact on their mental well-being. We need to provide robust mental health support systems, including counseling and therapy, to help our first responders cope with the stress and trauma they face on a daily basis. Finally, we need policy changes. This means rethinking the way we approach drug addiction in society and treating it as a public health issue rather than a criminal one. This shift in perspective can help to reduce stigma, encourage people to seek help, and ultimately save more lives. The opioid crisis is a battle we must fight together. Let's support our first responders and work towards a safer, healthier future. Together with increased funding, improved training, mental health support, and policy changes, we can pave the path forward, providing our first responders with the support they need to combat the opioid crisis. The opioid crisis affects us all, but it's our first responders who bear the brunt of it. As we've journeyed through this segment, we've seen the multifaceted ways in which the opioid epidemic has created an invisible battlefield for our first responders. They're not only on the front lines of this crisis, but they're also the ones most deeply impacted by its consequences. We've heard the stories of their experiences, the dangers they face that are seen and unseen, the emotional and physical toll it takes on them. They're the ones who run into the chaos when everyone else is running out. They're the ones picking up the pieces in the aftermath of an overdose, facing the stark reality of this crisis day in and day out. Yet, as we've learned, it's not just about the risks they face in the field. It's also about the strain on their resources, the lack of adequate support systems in place to help them manage this growing crisis. The opioid epidemic isn't a problem that can be solved by first responders alone, it's a societal issue that requires all of us to step up. As we move forward, it's crucial that we continue to shed light on the challenges first responders face and emphasize the need for increased support, providing them with the resources they need whether it's better training, more staffing, or mental health support, isn't just an investment in them. It's an investment in our communities. It's also important to remember that first responders are more than just their jobs. They're our neighbors, our friends, our family members. They're human beings who deserve to be seen, heard, and supported in their fight against the opioid crisis. In closing, it's time to bring this invisible battlefield into the light. Our first responders deserve nothing less. The opioid crisis is a battle we cannot afford to lose, and with adequate support and resources for our first responders, we stand a much better chance of turning the tide. It's time to bring the invisible battlefield into the light. Our first responders deserve nothing less.